UK gangs are using a new brutal tactic, kidnapping. Get in the car and we just disappear. If you have to lose a car or a thing, that's a car, I'll do it. I meet the young victims forced to hand over cash or face the consequences. Oh my goodness, your head! Bloody hell, man. Kidnapping in the UK used to be mainly a gang-on-gang -gang crime. Who's our guy? We're talking about drug culture, dealers, money, cash, under the mattress. But now, one in five kidnapped victims are innocent civilians. I got bundled into a car. They tied my hands together, my legs together. He shoved a gun in my mouth, cocked it in my mouth. I come face to face with the kidnap gangs who target members of the public. Get somebody to watch the house, get me to sleep in, and we to work in the morning. And I speak exclusively to the head of Britain's anti-kidnap police. We live in a covert, a secret world. If we get it wrong, someone is going to die. Across the UK, reports of kidnappings are on the rise. Huge ransoms. Torture. And teenagers snatched off the street. Official figures show kidnappings have increased every year for the last five years. I'm Livy Haydock, an investigative reporter, and to find out what's behind this surge of violence, I need to hear it firsthand from the people involved. I've tracked down a Birmingham dealer who told me kidnappings become part of turf wars between drug gangs. He's agreed to meet and tell me more. In the last year alone, West Midlands police have reported 376 kidnappings. I'm just looking through some of the articles from recent months about what's going on here. And the headlines are, you know, kidnap gang tasered victim's testicles. Um, another one, they poured petrol on him and he died three months later. Knives, guns, then kidnapping, kidnapping, kidnapping. Okay, um, they're ready, we need to go. You good? Yeah, can we go? The guy I'm meeting said he's only going to talk if we don't show his face. Hiya. You like to have a chat? Yeah. I'm trying to find out more about, um, there's been this rise in kidnappings, right? Yeah. Is it something you're involved in? I have been, yeah. You have been? Yeah. Someone that I know might come to me and be like, that guy, heard he went and bought 50 grand worth of drugs last week, cash. So we're like, oh, OK. Uh -huh. So maybe we'll wait a little while and we'll get him. If they've got money, nine times out of 10, when you catch them, they won't have it on them. So I need to either put fear into them so they tell me where their stuff is, or physically harm them when more than likely they'll tell you where, where, where the money is. Kidnapping dealers is a lucrative business. But, he says, it doesn't go outside the drug world. Never civilians. No. They've got nothing to do with this. We're not talking about going into civilised communities, kidnapping them and tying them up for their shit. We're talking about yeah. drug culture, dealers, people that are robbing other people. I need cash under the mattress. How hard do you have to push them to give you information? How do you get that information out of them? I wish to make no comment. No comment? No comment. You torture them? No comment. Well, I don't know if you pick this line, you pick this line. But did you pick it? I had to. Why? I had no other choice. 
Do you honestly feel that the only chances in life you have um, are to rob other dealers, kidnap people? Yeah, right now. Really? Yeah, right now, yeah. For this guy, kidnapping is just another weapon in a constant battle between dealers. But you don't have to be involved in drugs to get kidnapped. Sometimes just owing money to the wrong people can have horrific consequences. I'm heading to Cardiff. Kidnapping is a growing problem across Wales. I'm meeting a guy who's happy to talk, but has asked me to change his name. Two years ago, a man he knew persuaded Daniel to move some money through his bank account. But they got into an argument over how much cash Daniel needed to transfer back. Daniel thought the man was involved in crime, but he never expected the brutality of his response. The man forced Daniel into his car and drove him to a house in the suburbs. When they stopped, Daniel saw his chance. I'm not going to lie. Fear, uh, fear gave me at first, but I tried and run. I tried to make breakfast. CCTV on a house a few doors down captured Daniel's attempted escape. But his attacker and an accomplice gave chase. He catches me, beat me up, then put me back to his flat. He tied me up, he boiled up water and dashed it of me. He's free boiling water at you. I still have scars. You've got scars. Scars at the back of here. He then went upstairs, got a beard trimmer, and just shaved my hair off. Daniel didn't have the money the kidnappers were demanding, so they began to threaten his mum. He came to call in my mum's number, blackmailed my mum to send him a thousand five hundred pounds. Could you hear what she was saying? It was on speaker. She was panicking. She was like, "We ain't got the money." Oh my goodness. <gasps> Your head! His torturers sent Daniel's mum photos of what they'd done to her son. Bloody hell, man. One message said, if you want your son to come back to you, make sure you get the money. I will start doing things to him that will make you cry. Believe me. But Daniel's mum didn't pay. Instead, she called the police. Daniel wants people to know exactly what happened to him, so he's agreed to take us back to the house where he was held captive. The landlord of the house had nothing to do with Daniel's ordeal, and the kidnappers are long gone. This is the street they brought you to? Yeah. Here. Yeah. This one. Wow. Right there. Uh-huh. This is Daniel's first visit since the kidnapping. Hey, what's this wrong? He wants to come to terms with what he went through, but it's not easy. A neighbor's CCTV camera captured the moment police arrived to free Daniel. Inside, they found Daniel handcuffed to a radiator, bleeding and almost naked. He'd been held hostage for three days. Do you ever think about what you were going to when you were back in there? I don't know how to explain it. I just don't feel anything. I don't need that on, on my head at all. When you hear a story like that, held for three days, chained to a radiator. He clearly plays it down a lot. Maybe that's his coping mechanism, but when I saw those pictures, I mean, it's horrific. And they, they will stay in my head for a long time, I think.
I've managed to track down another kidnapper in Birmingham. I want to question him about why such extreme violence is used in kidnapping. This guy is a serious criminal. Who's our guy? So we've put extra safety measures in place in case anything goes wrong. Hello. Thank you for meeting with me. So you've done kidnappings yourself? Yeah. This is my life. This is my job. This is what I do. So do you get kind of commissions almost to if someone needs someone kidnapped? We do it for free. I enjoy it. Tell me. It's torturing. No, like, yeah. Take it to the next level. For you, is torture a necessity to it? Yeah. Or torture them more. Yeah. Mm. How far would you go with somebody that you? As far as it has to go. If I had to pull the party popper through a cigar cutter, make him think I'm gonna cut. You know, I would take it away. Oh, sorry, break that down for me. I don't understand. Pull the top through a cigar cutter, I squeezed it, and it started bleeding, and I told him everything I needed to know. Do you have limits? I mean, would you kidnap a, you know, you kidnap a woman? If you need me. Wouldn't harm her. Wouldn't do nothing to her. Really? No. What are your sort of rules? Do you have rules? Yeah. Don't touch women and kids. Who are the types of people that hire you to do this? No, I'm sure no question. But are they big players in the criminal world? Doesn't matter. You really don't want to say? No. Do you think they? I've met some nasty people and some very violent people doing the job that I do, but no one, as a matter of fact, as blatant as, you know, I, I enjoy it, I get a kick out of it. Messed up. Like, that's a true. I want to call him a psychopath. The organised criminal Zulu works for aren't alone in the use of kidnapping. In Kent, police say County Lines gangs are behind a recent spate of the crime. They gave me access to body cam footage of early morning raids to take down organised gangs operating in their area. Multiple arrests were made and half a million pounds worth of cocaine and speed were seized. The chief constable here says it's serious gangs like these that use kidnapping to enforce and intimidate. In Kent, there are five times more kidnappings than a decade ago. Kidnap needs a specialist response because you've got a hostage being held and he or she could be killed at any time. The longer it takes to get you back, the more you get tortured. Wow, that's an awful amount of responsibility, blimey. We have one objective, save the hostage, get them back alive. County lines gangs here use vulnerable locals to do their dirty work. They particularly seek out impressionable young women. They identify people that they can groom, show them the wonderful lifestyle this can be, look what you can get just by doing a little bit of work with me. And that might be carry some drugs. And so when, when they kind of get coerced into committing that criminal act, from the gang's point of view, does that then mean you're in this too deep well, now? Yeah. You're, you're committing crime? You're, you're yeah. in now, and then it's really difficult to get out. Why is there a link between kidnapping and county lines? They exploit and they abuse the vulnerable. Uh, and their way of um, keeping those people involved is to terrorise them. A couple of years ago now, a young lady who got coerced in this criminality, knew it was wrong, tried to get out of it. They hunted her down, they kidnapped her and beat her almost to death. She was not a nasty person. Mm -hmm. She was not a drug dealer. She was just a young, innocent lady that got coerced into this lifestyle. This young woman has agreed to speak to me, but only here in Kent Police Headquarters where she feels safe. I'll call her Ashley to protect her identity. Ashley was targeted by a gang and held in a hotel room for months. 
When she tried to escape, the gang came looking for her. I got a phone call to go and meet somebody and ended up getting bundled into a car, tied up. Tied up, but I mean... I was tied up. They tied my hands together, my legs together. Did you have any idea where they were taking nope, you? Nope, I didn't have a clue. They drove for hours. We stopped at a couple destinations. Some people got out, some people got back in. And then there were weapons put in weapons? the back of the car. And I knew it was a gun from the metal clinking. And he kept on looking at me going, pow, like... What happened when you finally arrived to I finally wherever? arrived at the destination. They dragged me into a secluded area. They hit me with a baseball bat. He made me, he made me open my legs. And he hit me in my, in my private parts with it. He shoved a gun in my mouth. He cocked it in my mouth. What did you think was going to happen? Did you... I just looked at him and prayed to the Lord they were just going to pull the trigger and get it over with. Seriously? Because I just wanted it done with. I didn't want it dragged out any longer than it needed to be dragged out. So if I was honest, I just looked at him and I wanted to say, shoot me, because that's all I wanted to happen then. I just wanted him to get rid of me. Did any of them say why they were doing this? Yeah, I wanted to leave. I wanted out. I was done, but they wanted me. And in their minds, you belonged belong to them. I belonged to them, yeah. Ashley was left for dead by the gang. Bloodied and unable to move, she was eventually found by a passerby. Ashley was rushed to hospital. Not knowing if the gang planned further attacks, her whole family moved from their home for safety. Do you think you'll ever fully escape what happened to you? Nah, no. Every day my body's hurting me. Every day I think someone's gonna kick through my door and I have to live with that for the rest of my life. I'm heading back to Birmingham. Before he cut our last interview short, Zulu told me women were off limits. But after speaking to Ashley, I know that's not always true. So I've convinced him to meet me again. I'm just waiting for my contact to turn up so he can take us to meet the uh, guy who's kidnapped for hire. He said we've got to be ready to go straight away, pretty much. Hiya. Okay, yeah. do you want to jump in with us and direct us how to get there? Yeah, okay. Keep the camera low. We can't identify the area, and also I don't really want people seeing us standing up. We drive until we reach a small industrial estate. So th this is, what is this place? Oh, this is just yeah. a spot. Can we go in? Uh, no. No? No. It's been used from time to time. Quick torture treatment, you know them. I didn't expect to be taken to the actual scene of one of his crimes. Why is this a good location? You'll never be hurt. You'll never be seen coming in here, just like a weapon. The van will reverse in. They'll cut your time up as quick as they're being tied up. They're being stripped off of everything, you know, and then violated. Flick them backwards on a chair, put a back towel over there, and pour water on you, know, and everything. Like water water. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that too. She's like, loads of ice can torch paper without killing them, and you know, I just get the bullets and side them to the leg. I tie them up sometimes as well, hang them by their hands, and pop up punch the life out of them. Why has it got to be so brutal? Just fast the bit. It's just the way I live. So that's for later. There's a blowtorch. Just in case you get a bit chilly. This I love this one. Why? It's the finger snapper. That's for fingers? Yeah. Put it straight on and bind. They'll tell you more time once you've done the pinky than that one. Before you get to the third finger, they'll tell you anything. Can I ask you what you do with this one? I'll take toes off of these. Especially for toes, nothing more than for toes. Would you do this to somebody who wasn't from the crime world? 
no personally, no. I ain't gonna stand here and say that don't happen because we all know it does. It's the Hungans that are looking at the soldiers and they're thinking I got something to prove here, you know, one of them. Do you think, though, that maybe they've learned this kind of crime from someone like yourself? Probably, but we don't target innocent people who ain't done nothing wrong. Should I be more scared of you or more scared of a bunch of kids? More scared of a bunch of kids. Me and my team, we ain't like that. We don't just go out there and tell those people for nothing. He's terrifying, but what he describes is very much crime on crime. He's not going to come after me. But the tactics that he's using have kind of leaked onto the street and could be used by anyone against civilians. That's what's scary. If Zulu's right, and it's a younger generation of criminals that have now started targeting civilians, that could explain the rise in cases. Of the nearly 6,000 police reports of kidnapping last year, the National Crime Agency investigated the most serious. They now estimate that one in five kidnapped victims is completely innocent. David Jones runs their specialist anti-kidnap unit. Yeah, off to you. Thank you. Kidnap will not be tolerated in the United Kingdom. It is with the most serious criminal offence outside of murder that anyone can imagine. The psychological impact is absolutely colossal, not only for the time that they're in captivity, but it's the aftermath as well. The NCA is highly secretive about how they deal with live kidnappings. I am not going to venture into the tactics that we use. We live in a covert, secret world, because someone's life is at risk. If we get it wrong, someone is going to die. Have you seen cases where people have been targeted at random just for a kind of robbery, but they've taken them off the street and held them somewhere? Yeah, yes, I have, sadly. But it's, it's a risky business for, for kidnappers and hostage takers here in the United Kingdom, because they know that the police will not tolerate that in any way, shape, or form. And we will do absolutely everything that we can to get an individual back safe and well. Despite the efforts of the police, there are criminals willing to take that risk. I eventually tracked down a South London gang member who admits he targets innocent people with no links to drugs or crime. Voice message. Oh, they're on the way now. But when I get to the meet, he's brought another guy I wasn't expecting. And they're both much younger than the others I've spoken to. A lot of money in kidnap. Does it matter if you're a criminal or you're a normal civilian? If you've got what you need, then you're going to be a target. Some kidnaps are random, innit? Some kidnaps are just doing a spare the money, but some of them could be planned up proper. I'm sure. Social media plays a big part in it. Putting up their cars, the designer clothes, to be a Rolex. You know what I mean? It's worth it for me and my guys. And they're probably going to come and take off. Really, that's all. People are asking. I get the feeling the second guy is becoming more agitated with my questions. They have money. They have money. They don't. They don't. Yeah, yeah. Minutes later, he puts an end to my interview. They're not even targeting sort of other criminals, but they're going for just people on the street. If you look like you've got wealth, then they could come for you. And that, that is really worrying. I'm not going to give up. I'm convinced that if I can get the first guy alone, he'll be willing to tell me more. But tonight, I've arranged to meet a man I'll call James. He's experienced the horror of being kidnapped off the streets by a gang looking for money. He was targeted at random here and snatched literally off this road. Now, he's going to meet with me and talk me through everything that happened to him, but he's that worried about potential repercussions that he's asked that we keep his identity hidden. I parked the car and I noticed somebody crouching behind the car in front. But by then it was too late. There were two more of them 
uh, and I was thrown onto the, uh, onto the road. And I thought, well, this is a uh, typical mugging. I handed over the, the watch and wallet, and then they said, OK, get up and get into the car. Get into the car? So I tried to run. I was tackled to the ground, and my head hit the road, and my teeth broke, and the eye socket went out. And that's when I saw the knife. Three big men. There's no chance. They put a hood over my head, and off we set. And then we were into the lockup. They literally ripped a suit off my back. They found a flex in the car, and they tied me up with the flex. Two of the kidnappers left with James's bank cards and stole 600 pounds, the maximum they could withdraw. The one that stayed behind then pulled out a knife. I thought, if this is it, I haven't had a bad run. And if this is it, make it quick. And so you're actually thinking you're going to die at that moment? Well, it was a distinct possibility. When the gang was done with James, they dumped him by the roadside and escaped in his car. So that was taken shortly after arriving in the hospital. I mean, your eyes black. Were you shocked when you saw yourself in the mirror? Well, the front they didn't let me have a look for oh, really? quite a while. Oh, really? knew it was so bad. Yeah. God, you poor thing. Wow. It, it, to meet somebody who was snatched off the street in such a violent way, it blows my mind. I mean, he's such a normal guy, and it could be my dad, my uncle. They treated him that way and left him in that state for a few hundred quid. It's unbelievable, it really is. Police think that James was chosen that night purely because it looked like he might have some money. When I spoke to the two London gang members, they said they did do spare-of-the-moment kidnappings, but sometimes preferred to take their time, choosing a victim and devising a plan. A few days later, Razor agrees to meet me again, this time alone. He said he'd shown me how his group operated and directed us towards a wealthy suburb. There's some very nice houses around here, and cars too. Are they the types of thing you look for? Yeah, stuff like this will stand out to us. How does it go down? Some people will target their every move, get somebody to watch the house. Whenever we feel like we can make the move, we'll make the move. Could be weeks, could be months, you know what I mean? For Razor, it seems there's nothing off limits. Only getting paid matters. But it's a dangerous game. Kidnappers face up to 12-year prison sentences, more if their crimes involve weapons or torture. And the police are determined to use every resource at their disposal to stamp it out. Daniel, Ashley and James's kidnappers were all caught and received substantial prison sentences. Daniel is determined to get his life back together, and I hope that sharing his story with me has been a useful part of that process. Today, he has a new, safe place to live, and he's working hard to forget the past. I'm not only grudging against anyone. In 2010, I had a stroke. Stroke is like, yeah, you, you will not be able to come back from that. Kidnap, you will not be able to come back from that. Well, I've overcome all of this. I admire your courage, after, especially after what you've been through. I, re I really do. Would you say you're looking forward to the future? For the future? Oh, no, that is emotion already. That's not. Yeah? I focus on tomorrow. Baby steps. That's how I look at it. <laughs>